Hi guys, you're back with Jazzy. Today we're going to look at the removal of the OEM fender on the Honda Rebel 500 Special Edition. So we're going to start off right now by removing the rear seat. To do that, you'll see in here, or well, at least on a 2022 model, there are two um, Allen key bolts right there. So part of this install actually entails removing these bolts, but also um, undoing some of these covers so that you can get to bolts which are here. And as you can see, you won't be able to get to those properly unless you start disconnecting things and moving them out of the way. You also need to remove this black plastic cover here so that um, because it's so that you can gain access to the bolts. All right, so the first thing we're going to start off with is removing the bolts on the side here. Now, you might actually have your rear pegs installed here, but you need to take them off. And the same thing on this side. So this is the mount to hold the muffler. So this is a six mil um, Allen key size um, tool you'll need for this one. And this is the impact wrench. So this is what makes it nice and easy. Go ahead and remove those four bolts and we'll resume. All right guys, so I've just removed the bracket for the muffler and I just decided to loosen the clamp and just remove the exhaust out of the way. Next step is to remove the bolt that's in between these two bolts on both sides and that's a five mil hex. Unplug this plug here. Now this plug actually um, has the wires that are used to connect to the back of the bike. Okay, so now that I've unplugged these four, and I'll just tell you that I've just used a tiny little flathead screwdriver to help lift up the locking pins for each of those four. Um, cover has a push pin set up, so I've simply just pushed this through, and um, that's made that side loose. This side on the 22 model is um, <clears throat> relatively tight, so this harness um, clips under here, I'm just going to pull that out from that holder and then that gives me a little bit of room to get into there. Cool. So now I've pushed that side in as well. All right. <clears throat> so I've been able to remove that push pin setup and uh, I'm finding it hard to get to this one. So to free up some space in this area, I'm actually just going to pull these four colored plugs that we had out through here and that's just then going to give us a little bit of leverage so that we can have more room to get to that plate cover where's the last one there it is so now i've got all four so they can go over there as you can see i've now got that cover back as well so <clears throat> the idea here is that you need to get these two push pins off. So there is the other one. I've just pulled that out. Just putting them all down there so they're nice and together. So the next thing is we want to remove the negative terminal for the battery. So basically um, that is it there. All right, so just before I actually um, go to disconnect the negative, I found that um, these um, wires, wiring harness connectors are rubber and it's easiest to slide them out. So there's one, two, three. As you can see, they all just have the same sort of connector. It's just a rubber thing that slides over those parts there. When you drag all these <clears throat> out of the way you'll find that the tray has a lot more room to move um, <clears throat> I also use my finger to pull that clip up so that it could slide out and off this piece here okay guys so when you undo the screw for the negative terminal you then just need to slide the gray um, I guess you would call that like a ring clamp for the negative lead away because this black um, tray 
has a circle around it. Now I'll be able to show you this more clearly when I get this out, but basically you can't get this tray off because this black circle part, I'll put my finger behind it, prevents you from lifting it up. So you must disconnect the negative. All right, so now that that's bagged and I've pushed it down out of the way, the battery is not live now. So the next step is that we need to remove this push right, pin. So now I've got two more push pins on the 2022 model and I used a flathead screwdriver to loosen these parts here and there there's three parts but then I'm trying to lift this plastic up and it can't go because this brackets in a way so I'm going to use um, my impact wrench to remove these two 10 mil bolts so that this whole bracket can come off All right so I've taken the two bolts off there's the bracket and there's the two um, M10 bolts so now that that bracket is off, um, with a little bit of pulling from here, I should be able to get these brackets out. I need two hands. <clears throat> so that's what this part looks like when it's removed. As you can see, three push pins, and then the, the harness just slips in through there. What we're going to look at doing is removing, looks like, this bolt and, yeah, this bolt. All right, so as you can see, I removed the bolt from here and here, which are 14s. Um, then I actually started trying to undo the bolt, which is next to the positive terminal for the battery. And um, I could get the bolt out, but just did not have enough room. The battery, I was pushing the battery across and it just wouldn't go. So the easiest thing to do was just to remove the screw for the positive terminal and then just slide the, um, the cable for the positive back and then the battery came out. So this is what the 2022 battery comes with. The compartment with. that the battery sits in looks like. All right. And uh, I can now finally get to this last 14 mil bolt and then this fender will slide off. Backwards. Okay, so I was able to undo that last 14 mil um, and then I was able to slide out the whole rear fender. One thing I noted as, as I was trying to pull it out, this part of the harness goes around this little ball part. Okay, so the way that these um, brackets go is, it, is that it's radius up or arch up and the bolts face in. So when you put these two bolts in, the other thing you've got to think about is that this plastic cover needs to be on the outside of the bracket so it doesn't go on the inside. What I've done is I've just hand tightened the two 14 mil bolts and then I've just got this uh, M5 um, bolt in here. So I decided that just before I go to put this bracket in, I'd better put the battery in because yeah, unless you've got small to medium sized hands this is a hell of a job to get the battery back in and to get that positive terminal um, back on it's not so hard to actually get a terminal but it's the red rubber rubber cover which you want there so there's no short um, that makes it hard so i literally took about 15 minutes to get that one positive terminal on because everything is so tight okay guys so i've now got the four bolts all tight and i've just put this uh, part here back on with the two I just wanted bolts. to detail for you what these wires mean so looking at it like this left side right side so left indicator is the orange plug right indicator is the blue plug then you have two sets of white plugs here one of these plugs the green green and brown is for the brake light and on mine it's actually, no, it's got some writing but it doesn't seem to make sense. Green, green and brown is brake light and then there is a green and brown, all right, and this one is for the white light that is used to illuminate the um, license plate light or tag light if you call it that in America. All right guys, so now I have done a mock connection of everything and I've also gone ahead and installed the eBay side mount license plate. I've just got a um, 
non you know non branded license plate light as well and I've wired it in now what a lot of people do is they just use this mount that is here and connect it straight onto this lower shock bolt but in my case what I've done is I've purchased an extension bracket and that's purely for the purpose of bringing this license plate to the rear now it does move around a little bit so um, it's not a perfect solution and I'll need to try and figure out how to make that a little bit better but my purpose for doing that was because I wanted the license plate mount to sit at a point at the rear where according to our laws the license plate has to be viewable from a 45 degree arc from the rear of the bike mm. that our laws in Australia have or say is that in order for indicators to be legal they have to be 25 centimeters or more apart from each other which they are when I mounted these aftermarket ones on the shock towers but of course this is not 25 centimeters it's only probably about eight centimeters distance here so the way I've wired this up is I'm only using this for the purpose of a brake light but I will tell you what you need to do if you want to hook up the indicators uh, for that purpose of just using a fender so I'm wanting to try and keep this bike legal and um, that's the whole purpose of why I've, ins I've installed these indicators so I've bought a bracket and I've bought an indicator and that's just mounted straight into the um, shock top shock bolt and uh, yeah so now what I'm going to do is just talk about how I wired what this I up is that you, you definitely have to have the negative off the battery so that you can go ahead and connect the reefing and whilst you've got wires live like this and not connected again this is just for a test fit mock fit to make sure that everything worked correctly so starting off with the rebel fender as you can see I have I'll just turn the light on connected the wiring loom onto the um, wire holder as I said at the beginning of the video and so that's going to stop it from just falling down because the hot glue is not enough to keep that wire in place so I will be cable tying, uh, tying the rest of it up to this frame once I've got everything together and the seat on so the way this works is from the K-speed um, wiring loom um, that wiring loom has a total of five wires coming from it so what you need to do to connect these up is on the last white connector you have three wires coming from it a brown a green and a green and yellow the brown goes to the white on the k-speed wire the green goes to the black on the k-speed wire so that's the earth and then you've got the green and yellow which goes to the red on the k-speed wire if you want to use indicators on the k-speed fender then that's what these green and yellow ones are for and I believe the yellow one goes to the right um, indicator and the green goes to the left indicator so if you want to use a combination of indicator and indicator here you can you simply just have to connect it to the corresponding indicator wire now if you use aftermarket indicators they're going to come with two wires at least it'll be something to the effect of a black for an earth and maybe a red for a positive in this case the indicator is a dual purpose light so it, you, it works as a brake and an indicator or it works as a um, running light and an indicator depends how you wire it up in my case the um, so we're looking at the right side of the bike here right side corresponds to the second plug which is the blue plug the blue plug is your right side rear indicators when you follow that blue one out it comes to this wise you've got a green from factory and you've got a light blue green is the earth and light blue is the indicator wire so as you can see yellow goes out 
to the indicator and green goes out to black to earth on the indicator. The way I've got this set up is I wanted the red wire to act as a stop light only. So that means that on my K-Speed Fender, the, the K-Speed Fender is the running light and the brake light as the fender on the fender. But I want these indicator lights to also work as a brake light only. So when I press the stop. So in that case, then the way I've wired it up is the red wire that's coming from the indicators actually goes to that first case um, factory loom and the red wire joins into the green and gold wire, which is the stop wire for the K-Speed fender. So all together, I've got two reds, one coming from the indicator, one coming from the indicator. And then I've got the red coming from the K-Speed harness. And those three reds all join up to the green and yellow wire that comes from the first plug of the OEM harness. Great. The first plug, the third plug that's on here is orange. And orange corresponds to the left side indicator. So the left side indicator again has a yellow, a red, and a black wire. The yellow is, is for when you turn your turn signals on. On the OEM harness, for the orange harness, the orange harness has a orange and a green wire. The green again is earth, and the orange is the indicator signal. <clears throat> again, the red wire from this indicator, I want it to work as a stoplight, and so therefore the red wire is joining up to the first white harness, which is connected to the K-speed harness, and that red wire only joins to the green and yellow wire in the OEM wiring harness. The last thing I've got connected is the fourth plug, which is the white plug down the bottom here. This white plug has a brown and a green wire coming out of it. I've hooked it up so that that runs down here. I just did a little extension here and then I've got it going to my white license plate light. So again, um, on this um, harness, the green is earth and the brown is power. So the green is going to more than likely on your license plate light you'll have a black and a red. So the black goes to the green on this one and the red which is power is going to the brown on this plug. So I'll just turn that on now to show you guys what it looks like. So as you can see running light on the K-Speed Fender is on, on the rear, and so too is the license plate light. So these are 50-50 um, SMD LEDs, 50-50 um, talks about the power output and the size, they're a large LED, and as you can see that lights up that plate pretty nice. So I've got the running light on the um, bike here. Now I'm holding this with my left hand and I'm trying to reach my <laughs> foot peg. But here's now me putting on the brake. So it's illuminated and if you see the indicators you'll see that they're indicating as well. So the next thing we're looking at now is the indicator. So I'm just going to turn the indicator on. Now as you can see I've only got the indicator on the shock mount because I don't want it on my K-Speed Fender due to our local laws. And then just going to the left side, so there is the left indicator on as well. Okay, so we are at the next morning and as you can see, we've got all of the wires tidied up for the K-Speed Fender in store. So I thought I'd just talk you through how I've routed the wiring so that it's sort of neat and out of the way. Um, I've also t flipped the bracket for this license plate holder so it, usually it faces this way and I've just faced it that way 
so that I can bring the license plate closer to the tire. It's probably about eight centimeters from the tire at the moment. Um, yeah, with this extension bracket though, the plate is a little bit wobbly, like so. So it, it looks like I might need to put some sort of bracket between here to stiffen it up, or I might need to order just another one of these brackets and have two of them here. That means then I'd have to get a longer bolt for here, so that's not so hard. But anyway, I've routed the wire just using some um, zip ties, black zip ties, and then it runs up the back of the shock. I've zip tied the wire to the shock here. Um, yeah, so then it comes in here. Now, as you can see, I've put the um, sheathing and heat shrink around those connectors. And yeah, basically it's all blacked out there. I haven't actually covered these solder tubes that I've used for the K-Speed harness. Now, late last night, um, <clears throat> I decided to install the strobe light effect um, kit for the brake light. So that's where I was saying it does something like three or four quick flashes, then it does three or four slow flashes the moment that you hit the brake. Cut the harness again and just wired in the red and uh, black from this strobe kit, um, just directly into the red and black in the K-Speed harness. All right, so I'll just show you what that looks like. So as you can see, um, that's what the running light and tail light looks like. Now, when I hit the brakes, just watch how many times it quickly flashes. So it's like four quick flashes. I'll do it again and now. So I think that um, that's I must have for the bike as well. So this LED, when I when I purchased this kit, I was worried about the brake light wasn't going to be very bright. But as you can see, it's plenty bright. And um, yeah, I've just got a couple of sets of lights on in here. So it's not as though it was dark and it's over amplified. But um, yeah, so that's turned out really good. So the next thing um, I just lastly wanted to do is because I've got this strobe light kit here, um, when you go to put the seat on, and by the way, I've transferred the tools from my brown special edition seat. But yeah, when you go to put the seat on the bike, um, you can actually just see in there and so I don't really like the aesthetics when of you that. go to approach the bike. So as you can see, you can't really see anything yet. But if you come right up, <clears throat> then sure enough, you can see just the colored section of wires. So basically it is just that area there. Now, when I had a look at some videos online prior to doing this myself, a lot of people don't put this cover back in this top part. And that's because it typically, it from factory, it bolts to the actual OEM fender. And because there's nothing to bolt to now, it can be very flimsy. So what I've done is I've put a zip tie around that hole, one again around that hole, and then one to this top frame that the seat bolts into. So it can't go anywhere, it can't flip around and whatnot. And then I've just looped the power wire that goes to the k-speed fender through this zip tie um, and then through this one so the wire cannot go anywhere um, it's not going to come loose and then end up somehow in your in your rear tire and potentially causing an accident something like that so basically what i want to do to cover this area is my initial plan as a part of all purchasing stuff was to buy a like two mil plastic sheet and I bought this from Aliexpress. I'll have the link for it if you're interested in doing this as well. And my original plan was to not actually run that cover and just to cut this and fit it to the whole circle of this area. 
But um, I've decided in the end not to do that and to just put the OEM part back. And instead what I want to do is I'm just going to cut out a bit that just covers this area in here. Okay, so just in preparing to cut this black plastic, I've just got a piece of paper and just roughly figured out how I want the cover to um, be installed. So I'll go ahead and use this template now and just cut around this plastic and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so the template um, needed a little bit of modification, but I got it to work. So as you can see, I've got it bolted down under the seat bracket mount now. And uh, yeah, so now when you go to look, you can't see anything. It's nice and blacked out. So it's nice and shielded all underneath there. And the best news is that the seat actually fits. So I'll mount that up now and show you the end result. All right, so I've now finished mounting the seat and yeah, the two bolts are tightened. So that is the last step of the whole process. Now, as you can see, the um, area that the, is underneath the seat is blacked out now. So that greatly helps to just make the aesthetics of the install have that finishing touch. So I went hunting on Facebook and YouTube to have a look at the relay in store for the Rebel 500. And you would have thought that it would have been placed down there under the seat and it would have been one of those relays. But unfortunately, my research suggests that it's actually located under the tank somewhere in this front right hand corner. All right guys, so I've removed the two bolts from the um, back of the seat here. And as I was saying, when you go to remove a seat, you've just got to pull it up towards the back because here on the front of the seat, it's got a little latch that tucks in underneath here um, to keep the seat in place. Next, we're going to need a Allen key to um, remove the from here. And this is the locking mechanism for the tank. So the tank apparently has a similar sort of thing at the front end to the seat, which it sort of digs in under, and then it's got a bolt at the rear. Okay, so first of all, when you go to remove this bottom part, it's because the rubber around the bolt, if you've never had the tank up before, it's a bit tight, so you actually have to lift it up slightly just to get to that point there. And then um, what I've done in my case is I've faced the handlebars straight so the wheel straight so it just gives you a tiny bit more room just to maneuver the tank as you can see there's not a much there's not a lot of room there but you want to clear up some spaces just like that so um, i've got an aftermarket uh, cover on this tank but it makes no difference the, the way to hold the tank is that underneath this part here you've got a whole handle area whereas at the front you don't it's all round so hold it from here on both sides of a tank and lift it that way. Now, what I'd done was I'd um, started filming the video, I'd removed the tank, which was very easy, simply by removing a bolt here and sliding the tank a bit back and a little bit to the left. Then I actually got uh, into this location. Now, if you've got a 2022 model, at the very least 2022 and possibly some 2000 and 21 model uh, Honda Rebel 500s. Maybe it might be the case for other Rebels. I can't confirm and I don't know. But what will happen is if you've got a, 2020, a 2022 model, your relay will be right here in the middle. And the OEM relay looks like this. As you can see, it says Mitsuba and um, yeah, I'll throw the part number up on the screen just now. Now, this 2022 model has an, an oval sort of shaped plug, as you can see here. It's got eight pins inside, whereas the one I purchased from Kojima, which said it was for 2017 to 2021 models, has this shaped three prong connector which can't fit. Now, in all the videos I've seen online, people have installed um, 
aftermarket relays with this plug and that is no good for the at least 2022 model possibly some of the 2021 variants so if you're wanting to make sure if you're if you have a 2021 um, model and you're wanting to know for sure if you are going to be ordering the right aftermarket relay just do as i've done pop the tank uh, under the bolt slide it a little bit back as you can see that's what it looks like underneath the tank and then you'll need to um, if you've got a relay in the middle like so underneath this gray bolt then it's more than likely that you're going to need this eight pin oval shaped um, aftermarket relay if you have a relay box which is somewhere over towards here or here and you can see on the relay that it says something to the effect of LED then you've got the older style relay which requires the plug that I just showed you from the Kojima part that I've purchased there so unfortunately I'd spent about $40 plus shipping Australian to get that part delivered and it's the wrong one Luckily though, I've got a friend that's got a 2019 model and that should fit her bike. Um, so I'll do a video showing that um, later on for you guys to see. So I'm actually going to plug this relay back into here and um, put the rubber cap that was on it. And yeah, just in case you're wondering, this is the main power relay. So believe it or not, the main power relay for this bike is smaller and just fits into you'll see that there is um, a there you go focused um, there is one relay slot just there that has the pins in it and that one is empty I don't know what that one's for but this is the main power relay for the bike this is not the indicator indicator relay so yeah you um, I'll put these two back and then my bike will be back to riding and starting and flashing with fast indicators but I'm going to have to do an update video I've just ordered a aftermarket Daytona um, flasher relay to slow down to 85 flashes per minute I'll just pop that up on the screen now for you guys to see and that was about $50 Australian so $10 extra and then I've just paid for three days shipping EMS from Japan, which I think came to 26. So all up, it's about $76 Australian to get that to me, hopefully um, by Monday. So yeah, unfortunately I can't do that video in store for you today, but I will post an update just going through this procedure in more detail, showing you exactly how to do this if you've got a 2022 Honda Rebel CMX 500 onwards. All right, guys, so thanks very much for watching the uh, video in store of the um, Diablo Genuine Rear Fender swap for the CMX 500, uh, which included the side mount, side mount license plate as well, as well as all of the wiring that's been involved. Please subscribe and comment down below what you think of this mod as well as any questions that you may have in relation to this in store. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.